Welcome to Good Mythical More. Learn some soup trivia with us. Stevie seems to know a lot of soup trivia. But first we're gonna name that squad. What do you call a group of gorillas? I think it's a troop. Uh, a grunt. I think it's a troop. I feel like I, I feel like I've seen this in like a Jane Goodall foovie. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say film and movie, and I said foovie together. Yeah, I, I said a grunt of gorillas. What is it? Just tell me. A group? You don't know? No one knows. It really. I think it's a troop. I think it's a grunt. Man, the suspense is killing us. And hopefully it's making Zach uncomfortable because he's <laughs> over there trying to figure it out. Uh, Stevie's got some trivia associated oh. with soup. A, um, a what? Troops. W H O. Whoop. A whoop. A whoop. A whoop of gorillas. I don't believe that. It's a troop. Whoop. You were close. You were right. You were right. All right, Stevie, hit us. Hit us with some trivia. How do you know so much about soups? Everything's fine. Um. Well, I have it all written in front of me. Oh, got it. Oh, that's how you know. The um, <clears throat> the first girl that I dated in LA hated soup, and it was part of her personality, and it just didn't last very long. Hold on, hold on. What what, what else did she hate? You can, how, how do you hate what? soup? It was yeah, part of her personality. Hate soup. I just did not like that. I don't. I don't like hatred of soup. A, what a was her name? Hatred. When you say it was part of her, when you say it was part of her personality, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Jeanette. What? Yes. When, when you say it was part of her personality, you mean someone who hates soup also hates a lot of things that they shouldn't. No, I just remember that fact about her, and oh. we didn't date for a long time. So I, so in my mind, it's one of the key things about she, her. She, yeah. How long do you have to date until you find out somebody hates soup? That's not See, that's first... what I'm saying. Like it was stated I somehow. Think that's pretty so... I think it's pretty early. Oh. Because you got like you go out on a date and yeah. you got soup, you know, like or do you, would you like to get No, I don't you like know, soup. You want to go on a soup date? Yeah. No, no I hate soup. soup. Oh, okay. I think you could go years without finding out somebody hated soup. I think that would be unusual. Yeah, but first dates are also unusual. I mean, you could get a soup appetizer at most places. You could go on enough dates to go steady and not know no. <laughs> that they hated soup. But as soon as you found out they didn't like soup, it would get real unsteady. But what is her name, really? I'm not gonna say her name. I don't wanna, we, no. Well, first names. We we here at Rhett and Link Incorporated, yeah. we, we say first names. Come on, Stevie. Yeah. All right, give us a trivia. Okay. The earliest archaeological evidence for the consumption of soup dates back to 6,000 BC, and the type of soup was what? 6,000 BC. Lauren. 6,000 BC. Pterodon soup. So, um, I mean, I think it's just bones it's and just, water. Yeah, just I would just say some kind of bone broth is what I was going to say because they would like boil the meat and then they would just eat the broth. Nope. And how would they, how would they find this? This is a, a, an animal I'm looking for. Rabbit soup. Uh, mammoth soup. You're, you're closer with mammoth. Saber tooth soup. Large animal that you would never think of making soup okay. of. Giant sloth soup. <laughs> This is a violent, surprisingly Bear soup. violent animal. Nope. Saber tooth soup? Did we say right, that? I said that, yeah. Tasmanian devil soup? No. Nope. Big violent animal? Big violent animal that if you were like. Lion soup. Wading through water. Crocodile soup? Croc alligator soup. No. It's hippo soup. Hippo. Hippo soup? <laughs> you just give them the How answer. would they even. How would they oh. determine that? Uh oh. How would they determine to start with hippo? How would they determine How archaeologically they that that was it was hippo soup? Did they have a bowl with a I hippo bone in it? I do not have that information. Uh, that's I'm probably sorry. it. All right, hit us with another one. Americans eat more than blank bowls of soup each year. On average, there might be somebody out there who not on average, like of all the bowls of soup oh put together. Oh my goodness. Okay, oh. well you got to start with an average. Mm, that's tough. So I mean. I mean, on average, people are having maybe two bowls of soup a month on 
average. When you, when you have to do this amount of figuring to come up with an answer, I'm out. I just can't. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of soup. Well, oh let, let's try to goodness. answer the average a year. Do you have that oh, I'm answer? Gonna, no, I'm gonna get to the yeah. actual answer. Cause, Cause you're using that to get to it, right? What are you using for the average per year? Goodness gracious, it is 12 billion bowls of soup. You are so close. You're surprisingly close. It's a little bit less. 10 billion. Yeah. Hey, that's wow, good. That's that was good. good. That's good. How, that how did really you figure good. that out? What, what was your thought process? I said 24 bowls of soup per person, 350 million people. Oh, to, for, per year. You only eat 24 bowls. Yeah, I was two a month on average because I don't even eat a yeah, bowl yeah. of soup a, a, a month. Right, okay. And then I was like 20, 24 times 350 million. I didn't exactly know how to do that, but that's probably like eight or nine billion. And I was like, you're always a little bit less. So I went to 12. I should have just gone with my instinct. And I would have said nine billion right to begin with. It's still impressive. Gosh. Here's another number question. The largest bowl of soup ever had blank gallons of soup and was made in the Netherlands in 2009. 2009, they set a world record for soup? I mean, uh, you could have a bowl, how big is the bowl? You I could just the, make hot water and throw a, one hippo in there and you've got soup. Right. So technically but every it, it, hippo exhibit is a, is a soup. I think you're limited by how big of a bowl you can have is really, but maybe they didn't have a bowl, maybe it was an ugly container. Maybe it was like a, um, I bet you they took a container like like a shipping container, and they they lined it and then they filled it up with soup. I, um, but like this desk right here, if this was an aquarium, our desk was an aquarium, it would be like a thousand gallon aquarium. And so I know. And in a shipping container, how many of these desks can you put in it? I think they made the bowl on site. No, they they. Oh, to, That's a lot. For this of world trouble. record, they got somebody there in the Netherlands. They got somebody. They got bowl makers over there. It's not. They made a bowl. A, I'd say like. 20 feet across, this is a thousand gallons. It's like 30,000 30, gallons of soup. I'm saying it's a shipping container with a million gallons of soup. You're both way off, it's it, it's a smaller Oh, bowl. oh. Well then why are we even talking about it? Okay, it's, uh, it's just a thousand gallons of soup. It's like an actual, like looks like an actual bowl. Oh, 750 gallons. <laughs> 7,442.3 gallons. Uh, and then what, and then what? It had a lot of water in it. This <laughs> is not, I'm gonna, it had, I, a lot of water. it had seven pounds of parsley in it. It had 2,500 pieces of garlic in it and some other stuff. Some other stuff. And then what? They ate it. What month is National Soup Month? Oh man, is it in it, America? It's, it's probably the beginning of when you think you need soup. National, not, yeah. Not in the not when you're completely into this into the. Uh, so it's like October. September. I think it's October. I, I think September. I've been celebrating October. Nope. Oh, it's all the way in November. January. Oh, come January. on! You don't want to start so late. Yeah. Before I like to you, kick off a, a, a new year with soup. Before you ask us the next question, Stevie, I want to just get everybody to be thinking again, once again, about votelikeabeast.com. We put this site together because we feel like this election, and everybody says this every single year, and I guess it's always true, this is a really important election. And the whole idea behind votelikeabeast.com is that you are embracing your right to vote <laughs> but doing it in an informed way in an informed way that lines up with what's important to you. For instance, right. you know, for me, uh, there, you know, we're going through this crazy COVID-19 stuff, but the sort of the bigger looming problem for humanity that we're not really talking about a whole lot right now is climate change, right? It's still a huge problem, and it's a much larger problem in terms of number of people that it will affect over time. So for me, I look at candidates who actually believe that climate change is happening and actually want to do something about it. And so that's one of the ways that I make a decision about who I'm gonna vote for. So you, when you go to votelikeabeast.com, we actually have resources where you can go, you can look at your local ballot all the way down the ballot from the president to school board. And you can see what these people think about the things that you care about. And we've got links out to other resources where you can actually take quizzes and figure out what 
you know how your views align with other can with candidates. And so you, you know you informed. love quizzes. Yeah, quizzes, quizzes that you get. It is helpful though. Everybody gets an A. It's it's very helpful because it's. I mean, there's so much information to go through um, in order to make an informed vote, and you're just like, well, I'm just gonna do. I'll do a straight ticket thing, or I'll. You know, it's. You'll feel good on the other side of an informed vote. Um, a lot better than just leaving you know leaving the lesser the lesser ones blank or you know guessing right that's what <laughs> don't go in and guess well what a lot of people do and i i'll be the first to admit i've done it you get down to some of the judges and stuff and you're like who's got a cooler name you know it's like <laughs> you, you, you don't want to be that person you want to know you, you want to know and you can actually for a lot of these places you really haven't done that <laughs> no you, what you, what you can do is you can generate your own voting guide and have it printed out with you and take it into the ballot box or most of us are probably gonna be voting by mail. You can just look at the thing that you generated online and then go and uh, fill out the ballot. Vote, v Votal Ikea Beast. Yeah, Votal Ikea Beast. I didn't realize. That's what it is. Yep. VotalIkeaBeast.com. Right. Huh. Let's give us another one. How many packs of instant noodles do Americans consume per year? And I don't know if this goes into the previous total of bowls of soup. I don't think it does. I think that's not a good way to look at it. This is, cum this is, this is a cumulative number too? I think it's just, yeah. Wow. I, See, these cumulative numbers don't, I, the way my brain works, they don't mean anything to me. You know? Well, it's yeah, like, but you, you gotta do the average and then just do the math. It's all related. I, so I know, the but then it's like, person. oh, a big number. You know, it's like, that's, when people say, do you realize it's like I, you know when people quote big numbers? I'm like, yeah, big number. There I'm are some like, people yeah. who are d consuming the uh, instant noodles so often that they're sending the average up, and I would say they're sending the average like, up like twice a week is a lot to me. You think there's people who eat more than I think that twice this is a, a week a fifty percent increase. I'm gonna say 15 billion based on a 50% increase on just soup consumption. So you think that people eat more? instant noodles than bowls of soup. I think there's some people who are literally eating it every single day. Yeah. That's true. Uh, but the number I'm looking for is less. Yeah. Okay, six billion. I don't have a guess because it's... 4.4. 4. 4. Oh, okay. 4.4 4 billion cups of noodles. Blank. Big number. Are twice as likely to order soup for lunch than blank. Women than men. Yeah. Women like soup, except that well, woman that you were interested yeah. in. I wasn't after that. <laughs> Women like soup more than men. Goat head soup. You just, you're not gonna explore that. You're just gonna stay, you're gonna just accept it. <laughs> Rolling Stones. Yeah. <laughs> See, you ask a question about the music, here I am, I'm here for you. Goat head soup was a 1973 album from it's the Rolling Stones. It's a free, the album cover is freaky. That's the one where uh, they're like, like Mick Jagger's face is like behind uh, plastic. It's like his head is in a, a bag, I think. Okay, this one you, I, I think you need your whiteboards for because there's a, a multitude of blanks. Multitude Com of blanks. Complete the German proverb. He who has once blanked his blank always blows is blank. He who has once blanked his blank always blows his blank. Okay. I got, I know this one. Right. I've nailed it. Do you think you've nailed it? Don't look at my answer. I don't I've, like it when you do I've that. I've already written it down. I know, but I, still, I don't. I, I like you su being surprised along with them. Well, don't show it to me then. Well, I'm not showing it to you. See, it's like you I, I, like you were about to start reading it, so I was already looking at it. When do you I'm, guys remember when they changed Boston Market? They changed it from Boston Chicken to Boston Market. Does that stand out in your mind? Uh, it's it's always called Boston Chicken Market. It has never been Boston Chicken Market. <laughs> Boston Chicken was second. It was second. Boston Chicken, and then they changed it to Boston Market because at yeah, first it was chicken. only rotisserie chicken and sides, and then they added other meats, and they changed it. Huh. And I it know they're cornbread. Out. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, tell me about the cornbread. It stands out what? It stands out in my mind as like something that happened to me in my childhood when they changed Traumatic. to Boston that, Market. That, that's the trauma that's causing all your well, problems. Well, you know what I think it was? I think it was a tinge of like OCPD when the they had to change out the like signage because it just never looked as good. Like they didn't do a great job. And I just remember the chicken coming down and the market going up. And I remember thinking like, oh, it looked better as chicken. That We didn't have them until they changed because I never well, knew Well, I do them. remember that one month when it was Boston cornbread in between those two. My handwriting's not good. What was man, the saying? A man who has once burned his mouth always blows his soup. He who has once burned, burned his, his mouth, mouth always blows his soup. Okay, right. Well, I said he who has once sipped his soup always blows his wad. Um, and that doesn't make any sense. You, you Link, know, you are 100% correct. Every yeah. blank. Ever. Is it? <laughs> is it a, what, what's the beginning? Um, a wise? He, See, he I don't think that's true. Who has once, once burnt, burnt his, his mouth, mouth always blows, blows his soup. soup. That's not true, but uh, it, well, why did you say it was the, exactly the same thing? Because I know that I knew that's what it was, but I think it. I think I think people burn their mouths all the time and then do it again. Is you have to be like a wise man burns his mouth. It's like fool me once, shame shame on yeah, here, me. Here you go. Fool me twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George Bush did that. <laughs> fool me twice, you know you fool me. <laughs> Make your voice heard and vote like a beast. Visit votelikeabeast.com for all your voting needs.